Welcome to Picture Healer Channel. Today we want to talk about Yi Jing as a fortune telling method. This is a very ancient method of fortune telling. It's still practiced a lot these days. And I just want to give an overview of what the Yi Jing is and how do you find answers from the book of Yi Jing. The Yi Jing is usually translated as Book of Changes. It has the information of all 64 hexagram or 64 gua. And those 64 numbers are based on the Ba Gua, the eight trigrams. This book is originally from the Zhou Dynasty, about 1000 to 750 BC. Most Chinese metaphysics have the same theory. It's all based on yin and yang and tai ji, and then develop into the ba gua or the eight trigrams. And yi jing is also developed from the ba gua because each hexagram has six lines. So there's a upper gua and the lower gua. You can see the example here. This is number 12, stand still. The top gua has three solid lines and the bottom gua has three broken lines. So it's a combination of two ba gua images. For this example, the top one is heaven and the bottom one is the earth. And you probably know the solid line means yang and the broken line means yin. So it's a different yin and yang combinations that creates different situations. So the six lines together creates a gua or the hexagram. And each of the horizontal line is a yao. And here is a chart for the basic ba gua. And the first one on the left is qian, that means heaven. The second one is kan, that means water. The third one is the mountain, gen. The fourth one is thunder or zhen. The fifth one is the wind or the shun. And the sixth one is fire or li. And the seventh one is earth or quen. The last one is a lake or a dui. So that's the basis of all 64 combinations because eight times eight is 64. Here is an example of the first four hexagrams. We have Qian, Kun, Dun, and Mong. The first one's Qian, Heaven. If you look at different books, they will have different translation, but the meaning should be very similar. We can look at the hexagram on the right side. The first one consists of six unbroken lines. And we know the unbroken line is the yang, so this is the most yang. Both upper and lower guas are heaven. So this is a very auspicious hexagram. It's full of positive energy. And in the life cycle, you are at the top and the good luck is on your side if you pick this gua number. And the second one is Quan or the earth. And you can look at the image. Six lines are all broken lines. So that's the most in. It's the opposite of the qian gua, but it doesn't mean it's bad. It just shows the quality of Mother Earth. It covers and tolerate a lot of things on the Earth. The energy is more passive and softer but it's still very powerful and it can grow all kinds of things. Just like a mother, it can give birth to new lives and take care of other people. The third one is obstacle. The image is showing the water on the top and the thunder on the bottom. That can be a symbol of change or movement and also the danger. So that's a very simplistic way to explain the gua. Each line can also be related to a certain family member. It can be related to certain time and date or season. And if you have changing lines from your reading, you will have a new gua number that explains the future outcome. 
So there are a lot of possible ways to interpret each hexagram, but the book of I Jing provides you some clue. It kind of explains your current situation and what you have to focus on. Because the book is written long, long time ago, it's like a poetry. So it's a little bit difficult to interpret, and everybody will have their own version. But the basic idea is not hard to learn. Most of the time, you can find out if it's positive or negative. You can at least get an idea of the outcome or the issues you are facing. Next, we want to know the do and don't for the I Jing divination. Sometimes the I Jing as fortune telling can work very well, and you get very accurate answer. Sometimes it's totally off. There are ways that will make it work better, and here are some basic rules. The first one is to prepare your mind. That's a very important part of the whole reading. You have to be really focused and in a very calm state, so you can connect your mind and your energy to the method and the tools you are working with. If you just pick up any numbers or following any method randomly, it's not going to work. The mindset is a big part of how accurate the I Ching can work. The second one is to ask clear questions. If you can describe your question clearly, you have better chance of receiving a clear answer. And if it's a very general question. Maybe the answer will not be helpful. The third one is to practice often. The more you practice, the more accurate it can be. If you want to be good at it, you should practice frequently. And the fourth one is to take it seriously. If you just play with it or you don't believe it, you just want to try. Usually, you are not going to get accurate result. But if you take it seriously and only ask questions when you really want to know the answer, then you have better chance of getting the right answer. And for the don't, the first one, don't ask the same question more than one time in a very short time. If you don't like the answer, it doesn't make difference if you ask it again. Usually, the second time or the third time will not be accurate anymore. Unless you wait for a couple of days, or you can ask the question in a different way from a different angle, or describe it differently, and then you can get a different answer. But you should avoid asking the same question again and again. It's just not going to work. The second one is don't ask questions for other people. If you are not the person who really want to know the answer. It's very difficult to get a helpful answer, so that's one of the rules. Don't ask for other people. The third one is don't ask questions that you already know the answer, because you are not taking it seriously. It's more like a game, or you just want to play with it. And with that attitude, you are not going to get a helpful answer either. And the last one is do not harm other people, or being too greedy or unethical. That's just the basic rules. If you have bad intentions, the reading will not be accurate, no matter what type of method you try. So that's the basic do and don't rules. There are many different methods or tools of doing the I Ching divination. Here are some popular ones. The first one is a stick. That's one very ancient way of doing the I Ching reading. The second one is using coins, and typically it's the three coins. But there are different variations. Some people use six coins or more coins, and I think this is a very practical way of doing the I Ching reading. It's close to the traditional stick method, but it's much more simplified, and you can still create changing lines from this method. The third method is by using cards. 
either the e-jing card or some people use just a regular deck of card. With this method, it's very easy to just pick out a gua number and interpret from that. And the next one is from the rice. I've seen people doing that with a pinch of rice and pick out the rice grains. And that's also one traditional way of doing the reading. The fifth one is by the day and time. Depends on the time and the day you are asking the questions. The numbers of day and time can be translated into the heavenly stem and earthly branches or the five element and many other basic theories. And we can interpret that into one of the 64 hexagrams. With this method, you really don't need any tools except maybe a calendar or a watch. So this is a very convenient one but you really need to know all the theories to convert the numbers into the hexagram. And the next one is by birds. I've seen that too. People keep little birds in a cage and train them to pick out the right card for fortune telling. So that's one interesting method too. Last one is the online app or any online resource. There are many high-tech ways of doing the aging consultation or just a reading. This can be a very convenient way, but one big drawback is that you are not really that involved. So it's hard for you to have the connection with the tools and it's harder to get an accurate answer because it's too easy to just press the button and find out the gua number. But if your mind is not there, your energy and thoughts are not there. So the accuracy tend to be questionable. All of us want to know our future. A lot of times we just want a little more guidance or a little bit help to find our direction. So the fortune telling has its own practical use. And I do think everybody can learn to answer his or her own questions. The I Ching is very similar to a tarot reading. You find out the Gua number and then you interpret from that and also from the image of the six lines. If you're interested, you can learn from different books. There are so many I Ching interpretation books on the market. If you read a few, then you get the basic idea. Another one is online source. I don't think any one book or one website has the best information. You really have to check several and come up with your own ideas. And of course, you can practice more and answer your own questions, write it down, and over time you will be good at answering your questions. If you are interested in learning more about I Ching as a divination, please comment below and I can put up a class in the future. Thank you for watching today and see you next time.